Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen, you're in the zone with me, Isaiah, and today we're going to talk about Netflix's biggest and pretty much impressive documentary film called Abducted and Plain Sight, in plain sight, sorry, excuse me, directed and produced by Sky Borger, Borger, yes, and the centerpiece of it all is Jane, Jean, sorry, Jane Felt, or Jane Boger Felt, Broger Felt. But you get what I'm saying. So let's kick things off with the good, the bad, and if it's really worth your time to watch. So stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen, for the segments. Now, let's start with the good. The good is, of course, Jane Felt, or her full name is Jane Bro Burger. But for all intents and purposes, I call her Jane Felt. I'd be disrespective, but makes it easy on for me. Anywho, Jane Felt goes over the um the event of her being kidnapped by an evil man, um, Robert Birchtoe, who she really called as B, because her family and her herself trusted him so much that they didn't expect anything could be weird or wrong with this um, with B. So going from that aspect, I love Jane um, Jane Felt and how she dealt with this um, trauma in her life, and her going over accounts of being manipulated, being controlled by B. It was very heartbreaking to see. But at the same notion, you want to encourage her even more because she's talking about something that's so personal, that's so close, that's so close to heart. That how can she live with that? I mean, how? And so, as the documentary went on, she goes talk about her parents, talk about her sisters, and her pretty much her whole community. Where in the 70s, everybody trusts each other because no one locked their doors at night. They're they're pretty much that um, those um, American family tropes in the 70s. An Idaho family, go church going folks. Again, this was people who pretty much felt comfortable around their surroundings. And learning about um, Jane's um, upbringing was actually really nice. It showed us that she was a very outgoing person. She was very delightful. And she would pretty much stand up for people who can't really speak for themselves. Again, she was that type of individual. She was a really, really cool kid. But when her family was introduced by B and his family, which he was married. He had a wife and two kids, if I'm correct. And they play, and the two kids actually played with her and and Jean and um Jean sorry, Jane's family. I can't I don't keep saying Jean, it's Jane. Sorry, my bad. And so going on from that aspect, you pretty much see how B is manipulating um Jane because B has a romantic I'm sorry, not romantic, but very delusional and crazy romantic feelings for Jane because Jane pretty much was a spark of everyone's life because she was a special girl in a weird sense way for him but again he got so infatuated by her and as the documentary goes on even further um, we learn more about the another set piece in the uh, film which is the parents and I like how they pretty much said like the parents were very stupid Really, really gullible and stupid. And B started having a relationship with the father. No, in fact, it was a quick hand job, but it was just still. It, it's it, it it blows you out. It blows my mind away because it's like, wow, you actually fell for that garbage. And then the, and then he had an affair with them. Then he was having a sexual relationship with the with the mother. Again, this is the guy who kidnapped their daughter. Not once, not twice, but three times. And the monster is just so good at manipulating people. He can pick out their weak points and their and their high points. So it was just so immaculately crazy. But but Jane, she just kept going on with the documentary, and I give her a lot of credit because even that alone would hurt me as a child, like break me. But as time went on, in the documentary and her being kidnapped not once, not twice, but three times. I know I'm repeating myself, but you get the point. Um, she came to pretty much came to full circle that she is going to speak up. She is going to tell her parents the full story on how B was sexually um, molesting her because he was trying to get her pregnant. 
because she was on that delusion of oh she might be an alien because of B's tapes that he always puts in her room and she didn't really catch on until when she was in in her late in her almost her late teens like 16 and she had romantic feelings for a, a classmate and it was both ways by all means and when she's not having feelings for another person or another person at her, at her age, and she got really concerned, concerned and worried that her family might be hurt if they don't complete the mission, that the mission was getting pregnant by B. So after that lie was broken away from from her mindset, she broke down mentally and physically, and you can tell Jane was very emotional at that moment because. She came to the realization that she felt stupid and this and that. It's like, no, it's not your fault. It's his fault. He's the one who took you out of state. He's the one who's been trying to get you married and pregnant at the same time. Because he still was married and still got his kids. And so, again, her forgiveness towards B, her parents, and herself was just... It was just amazing. It was the most powerful moment in the film that I really do respect and like so james again is the high point and i hate to say this too another high point was knowing about b or robert birch toes um life we don't learn that much about him besides his brother who tells tells us that yeah he had a fascination with little girls and that was really weird and he knew the family knew that uh, robert was was a little bit creepy he he was a creeper and so Going from that aspect, it just goes more like, man, this dude's really crazy. He's insane. Because we learned that he was exiled from another church from rumors that he was messing with little girls. Again, this is almost mirror image of what's happening to Jane. And again, since they exiled him and sent him to a counselor, quotation marks, because that counselor was not really a licensed counselor or a psychiatrist or any type. He was just some some crazy person off the street. And the biggest downfall towards B was his tape recordings of his delusions of um, fantasies towards Jane as a child. Again, she was 12 and he was in his late 30s, early 40s, and he was sexually assaulting her. And it just blows my mind. And the family kept dropping the ball. I mean, I don't mean by the family, I mean the, um, the mother and, and the father. They kept dropping the ball, but come to the second to third act, they start to wise up and start pressing heavy charges on B. And again, the FBI was on his ass. Trust me, they was. And they were going to lock him away for a very long time, but they needed, they needed strong proof and evidence. So when Jane came to, uh, came to her senses and that shackle of being afraid of B and his stupid lies, they had a really strong case against him. So B and up and ended ended his life. So it was like, oh, okay, I don't care about him. He's dead. Good. He deserved it to be dead. I'm sorry, but he was a monster. And so this is where the third act, where Jane is pretty much an advocate now. She's a self advocate. She's a actress too, by the way, a well known actress. And when you see her accomplishments, when you see her fighting for justice for herself and also speaking up about this moment so everyone can be aware of monsters that prey on children or any type of monster that preys on the weak and so that was a really good focal point and because b is a big um um a learning moment or a good a learnable moment where a parent should be always aware or anyone really be aware of someone who looks creepy or not really looks creepy but acts creepy and just does out of the norm weird things towards children or towards anybody who doesn't have a voice. So, yeah. And um, lastly, on this good point, is um, the parents. And I know I talked a lot of shit about the parents, but the parents pretty much facing their own guilt and also telling us why they didn't press charges this first time around because they felt embarrassed of their own past um, sexual um, encounters with B. And so, I... I respect them for that, but I also I'm kind of pissed off with the parents at the same time. And yeah, that's all the good points I gotta say. So let's go on to the negative. Okay, so the negative towards this film is very like some nitpicking, but it's very big nitpicking here. 
because a lot of other documentaries do have this, but again, I don't feel like, I don't feel like rambling on. Let me just say it now. Um, we don't learn much about Robert Birchtow's um, family life that much. I mean, we got his brother, but his brother was no help to fill us in on like, what was he like? What was X, Y, and Z like? What did he do? What was his school like? What was his school life like? You know? I know I felt like I was repeating myself over and over again, but you know what I'm getting at. So, when you don't learn much about why he did this and how you can prevent someone going through this, because, again, he made a lot of claims that he was sexually abused as a child, and that's why he had to sleep in Jan Jane's bed for, like, at least six months for four different times a week. So, it was like, why did he do this? Why, why, why? I mean, besides the fact that he was romantically in love with Jane, which was, again, crazy enough. And so, going on from that aspect, you don't really see the film debunking his being sexually abused as a child. We know there was rumors of him being weird with, with little girls and also being weird around um, his own family members. His brother even said this too, like, yeah, like, I catch my brother one time. Again, I'm, I'm just paraphrasing, so I could be wrong. I catch my brother pretty much like messing around with my um, one of their cousins or one of their relatives. I can't really name offhand right now. It's like, oh, okay. So I thought the movies would dive more into that, but they didn't. They stopped at that marker. And after that, you get the sense of you don't get no real, like, what happened to the family behind them. Like, say, Robert had, again, he was married and had two kids. So what happened to the wife? What happened to the two kids? The film doesn't go deep enough with that. And so that's my, that's, again, that's a big issue for me because if you're going to get her side, you get everyone's side if you're doing a documentary. And so I'm not saying to say you're trying to lie or trying to be deceitful. No, I'm not saying nothing like that. I just want to know more what happened to B's family. I want to know what happened to them. Are they doing okay? Are they still alive? And the film doesn't ask, doesn't really answer answer those questions for me. And when it came to the third act, to the closing marker, we don't get no post credit um, post credit text of what's the family doing or how's everyone else doing. And um, it was just so weird because. I want oh, let me go one more thing too. Uh, gonna high another uh, this is a very really big positive. I know I'm gonna say the positive, but really quickly for the positive before I go back to the negative. Um the um retired FBI agent, again, he was my hero for that whole movie because he was thinking logically and smart, but again that's okay, I'm done. Okay, <laughs> sorry. So going back to the negatives. We don't learn nothing about B fully, and there's no way we can debunk it or prove that he was sexually abused as a child. And since we got no post-credit um, text uh, after the documentary was over, is that like, wow, that seems kind of like, it ends so abruptly if you don't get those type of like um, pages of like, what happens next, or what happened to these people, or in X, Y, and Z. I don't remember repeating myself, but I have to repeat myself because it will be the focal point of my overall score. So, again, not knowing about B, not debunking his um, sexual abuse claims, and not knowing what happened to his family, and no post-credit text. And, that's just, again, that's just me saying this, and going from there. And we'll go on to the final verdict. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so... Let's run down the good and the bad very quickly. The good was Jane Felt, and how she told her story, and I'm very proud of her. I really am. Um, the FBI agent, the, I'm sorry, retired FBI agent, he was pretty much the one who was actually looking out for her. Um, the parents coming to the realization that they failed. Um, learning about B and his god-awful tapes that were just disturbing as I don't know what. And... Um, I mean, the pacing was not bad. It was actually a really good pacing. First, second, and third act was actually good pacing. But I think about the bad parts was, again, we don't learn much about B after, I mean, before he actually sexually assaulted Jane that he do it to any other kids because it was rumors that we don't actually know the answers to. And since they really pretty much dive deep enough, we don't know if B actually was sexually assaulted or he made that up. We just really don't know. And not knowing what happened to his, uh, his family, again, his wife and his children, that was like a big misstep there. And finally, there, I wish there was like, again, a post-credit text where it says like, 
these person is doing this and this and this. We know Jane Phelps doing a lot of things. I get that. And her mother and her mother and, and um her mother and mm, her mother is also doing well for herself too and her father because they when they once they forgave themselves well the mother didn't forgive herself but once they forget forgave themselves for failing her it was actually really good and um again i forgot oh yeah the power of forgiveness is a is an amazing tool that this movie says at the end no fact a lot of bad things happen to you you can always rise up to the top and be whoever you want to be and so again that's that's very that's very inspirational forgiveness is a powerful tool because she forgave her parents herself and b which is like wow that's amazing that's a lot of strength you have girl that's great but again there's a lot of shortcomings in it i already said them before so and also um no beef towards sky uh, boardman but i kind of wish she would done more with the editing because when it switches over to b's taped and present day it was like you could have had like a nice segue from it or do it how do it a little bit more cleaner and also, it's a lot of missteps when people do um, documentaries when they don't go deep enough for other, other segments. And yeah, so my final verdict is a f- mm. it's a very low badass sun rating. It's a very low badass sun rating because I like Jane, and um, I loved the um, how she told her story. It was brave of her, but there was a lot of missteps where we don't learn much about B and his family life and his fa- oh, and his other family so there's that but at the same notion i had a it's kind of weird to say this i had a great time actually learning more what's going on within today's world and also what she was going through so if the documentary if it makes helps you learn something new or a new perspective then that yeah that's great that's good i mean i really love that a lot i like to learn new things but is it up there with like say blackfish dirty war tell the grim sleeper Really, no, not really, because those three documentary films are very, very impactful, very insightful, and very, it was a learning moment here. I'm not trying to say this, you can't learn nothing from, from this movie, but I think parents of any age, young, old, should really watch this movie to pretty much be aware of what monsters look like and how they manipulate people. And also, if someone's been a victim of a sexual um sexual type nature they should tell somebody they have to tell somebody and don't end up like jane's um family or mother and mother and um father and don't do nothing and sign a stupid affidavit but again i digress so again it's a low, very low badass sun rating but it's a good low badass sun rating so again do check out the movies on netflix Okay, folks, that's been my show. I'm getting the hell out of here and getting some sleep because I had to do this recording multiple times because of audio problems. So again and again, 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 do keep it locked. Lord and fair one for me because I'll be back with another review of a movie called OG. Yes, HBO's new film. So stay tuned for that if my laziness doesn't get catch up with me. <laughs> All right. I've been your host, Isaiah. You're leaving the zone. As always, do keep it locked. Lord and fair one for me because I'll be back with more interesting videos and I just like repeat myself. Peace.